We attach ourselves to people that make us feel warm and welcomed. It helps build community and it helps our survival. If you have untreated trauma, it affects you on a DNA level, can pass that onto your kids. So it's well worth getting your trauma sorted out. And I do my best to see that silver lining within every experience. The solution should be simple, but it's not because we're talking about culture change, talking about changing behaviours, we're talking about challenging identities. Hey everyone, and welcome back to the show here. Um, so this week's episode is a is about um, an idea that is very close to my heart, and the episode is called stop trying to find your purpose. And this is, this is an area in life, um, next existentialism <laughs> that I, that I got very much lost in, um, for a good couple of years, because, uh, as I began to recognize that I probably wasn't at the level that was necessary for me to become an AFL player in my late teens and early twenties, uh, my identity became to, began to detach from, you know, sports star, or sports super, superstar or footballer. And so I, you know, found myself kind of uh, swimming in between two islands uh, as representative of two egos, two personalities, you know, two identities. And um, I kind of lost my way. I lost myself. And, you know, and I think like a lot of people out there, I became very much obsessed with this idea of finding a purpose because, you know, for me, that kind of reflected a, a kind of a savior idea. It's like, oh, all I have to do is find my purpose and then I'll be happy again. And uh, I spent a long time looking. And I think you can imagine someone playing hide and seek uh, alone <laughs> without knowing that the, the, the partner has, uh, has stopped playing hours ago. That was very much the case for me. And it took me a long time to kind of recognize that the idea isn't so much finding something, but, but creating something. And I think when you start to begin to recognize that life is, is, is all about, um, a creation being created, you know, and, and you kind of follow what, what your interests are. And you might say, Oh, you know, well, I don't know what my interests are. And then the quit, you know, that, that, that it's all about going out there and looking, you know, I think a lot of, kind of what I went through was, was more or less associated with the fact that I was just young and I hadn't done a lot of things and I didn't really know what to do. And it's only taken me now to, you know, 28 bordering on 29 that I really am now aware that learning about the mind is, um, what I'm really, really fascinated in, but I, you know, I have other, I, you know, I'm interested in coffee. <laughs> I'm interested in jujitsu and, and, and weightlifting, the snatch and clean and jerk. You know, there's lots of other things, but to me, the, the hierarchy is very much with psychology being at the top of the pyramid, but that might be so different, uh, you know, for, for, for you or, or other people out there. And I think the irony with my life is that as I became more interested in finding my purpose and reading the psychology of finding my purpose, my purpose was there hidden all along. I just had to kind of step away from finding it and go and creating it and go, oh, well, there it is. You know, I want to be a psychologist. So that was quite interesting for me. But this is actually a, uh, a chapter from my book. It's my latest book. Um, and, um, this is the audio, uh, version of, of this chapter. And yeah, I, I always wanted to release this one on the podcast because I thought it was really important and it was, it was, it was definitely a topic of discussion that would come up a lot when I was first, uh, doing counseling work with clients. And it's, it still comes up from time to time. You know, most of us are, so heavily streamlined into one way of making our money that we seldom recognize there are many other avenues, not necessarily just from a financial perspective, but, you know, for things that we enjoy, hobbies, pastime, passions, you know, things that seem to be so inextricably linked to childhood imagination and uh, creativity. I think we lose a lot of that, um, you know, as we, as we get older and um, it's really it's really important that we don't, you know, or at least have something that's entirely our, our own and, and anything like that. Guys, just a quick word from sponsors, ISBN services. This is something that I use to get all my books published. It's a fantastic service. They do everything from uh, ISBN registration, you know, so there are some things you might not even know that you need to do when you're actually publishing or self-publishing a book. Interior formatting, which is takes a long time. Um, 
you know, ex- exterior formatting as well, getting the book to look nice. They do it in both paperback and ebook formatting. You just send them the manuscript and they do the rest. The best thing about self-publishing, in my opinion, is that you get to keep all the royalties and the publishing rights too. So you don't actually have to edit anything if you don't want to, which means that there is an onus of responsibility that falls on you to ensure that you are happy with what you've written that it is grammatically sound and that whatever you've written isn't, uh, you know, I suppose um, emotionally uh, motivated so that you don't look back on it in five or 10 years ago. Oh, damn. You know, that was just a, something that I was moving through at the time and I wish I hadn't have written that, <laughs> but it is good. It's really good. And you can get uh, 10% off if you use the checkout code MINDMATE um, when you are looking to get your book professionally published. So M-I-N-D-M-A-T-E and just head to isbnservices.com. Cool. All right, guys. Well, without further ado, uh, enjoy the show. Chapter 20. Stop trying to find your purpose. 2020 changed me. My purpose was headed towards working for myself. It's still my purpose, however, working as a counsellor and as a writer full-time might simply be another step along the journey of my life. There is always something more, something greater we wish to achieve, and that's why the meaningful path is also simultaneously and paradoxically unfulfilling. Before I came to this realisation, I wrote in my diary because I was extremely confused. 20th of October, 2020. Having since found my purpose, I realized I've lost it again, and this endless quest to find myself has only brought me closer to the brink of eternal insanity. Having now finished the writing of my third book, I again am suffering. I'm suffering because the road has ended. Running along that road, I could not wait for it to end. I could not wait to reach the destination, to find out what was waiting for me on the other side of hard work and consciously chosen pain. Would it be reward, an accolade? Would it be well-deserved satiation? Please let it last a lifetime. Nope. Now I have arrived. I'm still in pain. Why? Because I am always seeking solitude and bliss outside myself. I see no difference between the doing associated with the writing as a mere attempt to hide from the inescapable fact that I, like all other pleasure-seeking individuals, exist in a timeless void known only as the present moment. My inability to allow myself to exist there perpetuates the need to find myself. Am I a fraud? Perhaps, perhaps not. But what is now obvious to me is that everything I wanted and all I will ever want, I have. And what is it that I want? What is it that we all really want? What does the wanting want? Oneness with the timeless present. It's here right now, evident in the swaying of the tree branches outside and the cold air of my dog's breath as he sleeps at my feet. It's in the leaves, and it's in the sun rays, penetrating the lounge room windows. It's here, it's now, it's me. And anything that isn't that is a worthless pursuit. Anything that isn't that isn't anything at all. That is the only truth. Unfortunately, it is a truth I will forget as soon as I finish this writing, falling helplessly back into unconsciousness, the eternal hell. I know this is what Wordsworth meant when he said that, quote, Our birth is but a sleep and day remembering. What are we? Who are we? Who am I? Might it take me a lifetime to remember, only to realise that youth really is, after all, wasted on the young? Oh, the paradox and trickery. Sure, it would be easier to blame it on life, just as it would be easier to blame my addictive processes on the genes of my ancestors. But absolving myself of responsibility is a further addiction, a further escape from the eternal truth. And there is nothing to hide behind, no rock to climb under, no veil to mask my pain when I am present with myself. That's paradoxically the place I desire to be most, yet do my best to avoid when I've stumbled upon it. I guess what I'm looking for is a feeling of love. Love feels warm, connected, whole and free from want. Love feels enough. I feel content when I love, and when I am loved, I feel content when I am loved. When I'm not embodying love, that is when I desire the world to change and bow to my demands. When I'm embodying love, that is when everything is perfect simply as it is. Your purpose isn't really real. 
I tried to find my purpose for far too long. I read every book, watched every YouTube lecture, and demanded that each of my therapists and counselors show me the way to liberation and fulfillment. The thing is, your purpose doesn't exist. It won't ever exist. Your purpose is a marketing ploy designed to keep you attached to an idea that will always keep you searching, unfulfilled, and lost. Your purpose isn't your purpose. Your purpose is purely and simply what you're interested in right now and who you want to be, which is another way of saying what you want to be doing in six months' time. Chase the you in six months. Don't worry about five or ten years. Our brains aren't equipped to conceptualize such illusory spans across time and space. But the you in six months is practical and relatively tangible. The cool thing about the you in six months is that you really could become that person. They're not that far away. Chase them down. Maybe they're only six months ahead of you in their savings, in their training, writing, or relationship status. Beat them. What are some goals that ignite a fire within your belly? What would make you proud to have achieved in six months? Maybe you have some fitness goals, or maybe you're after a promotion at work, not only because of the pay rise, but because of what the proposed job would have you do on a daily basis. Here's the big one. What lifestyle would get you jumping out of bed in the morning? To take control over our lives, we need to create our own paths. We need to lay the bricks down ourselves and decide which direction our paths will lead. It's scary because it's all on us, but it's also the most meaningful way to live. Focus on who you're inspired by. You need to recognize that your mind isn't who you are. We are all who we choose to be. We are how we act across time. But how do you decide who to be? How do you decide who to become? As a counselor, I focus primarily on helping people create a sense of purpose and mission in their lives. I am primarily focused with existential therapy, in part because that was the area of my life in which I struggled the most. I realized upon reflection that my anxiety spikes, depressive states, and confusion stemmed predominantly from spending too much time in a psychological void. In other words, I had far too much time to think and would often descend down rabbit holes. We value thinking in the West, and don't get me wrong, thinking is important, but we are born to act. Spending too long thinking is a recipe for disaster in much the same way that acting without thinking will lead to constant failure. Sometimes I tell my clients to try new things, aren't I a genius, if what they are doing hasn't yet produced the goods. Sometimes trying new things worked well, but I think some of them were still struggling to release themselves from the indoctrinating idea that once their purpose had been discovered, they were destined to live a meaningful, fulfilling life. I can't help but note the similarities between believing in a happily ever after and that a purpose exists for us all, waiting to be discovered. How on earth did we come to believe that coexisting with a stranger for decades was void of hard work, compromise, responsibility, and the cultivation of a completely new and difficult set of communication skills. Relationships are hard work, and so they should be. If they were easy, they wouldn't really be worth much, would they? In any case, this is why I'm not a fan of psychic readings, tarot cards, determinism, fate, God's plan, and the like. I'm skeptical of all of that, not because I'm closed-minded or atheistic, but because I recognize the mindset of the people who are prone to paying for these services or believing in a divine will. Some of these people are lost, like I was, which then leaves them open and susceptible to believing anything and everything. Of course, these services can also be enjoyable and have their merit, but we human beings do have a tendency to notice patterns even when none exist. I suppose we all must make our own educated decisions, and if we happen to receive a life-changing experience from a psychic reading, then great. My issue is with people believing that they cannot influence the course of their lives themselves. We're always looking for answers to solve our indistinguishable, insurmountable problems, but the majority of our personal and existential problems can be solved by taking action, and this of course includes asking for help. But if you're not sure where to begin, have a think about who you're inspired by, and this will bring to your awareness something within you that is motivated to actualize its potential. Maybe you're resentful or cynical of someone doing something you wish you could. Or maybe they're doing a shitty job of something you know you could do better. Use all of that as fuel to get out there and be all you could be. 
When you focus on your inspirations, you get a glimpse of the person you could be if you put your ducks in a row. You won't become your inspiration because if you are smart about it, you pick a few inspirations, molding and personifying your own type of hero, your future self. Now go out there and become that hero. Creativity is your ticket to freedom. Human beings are creative creatures. We have been creating since we could think, maybe even before that. We see the world as we see ourselves and do our best to function in a socially applicable manner. Creativity helps us understand ourselves and the world at large. What makes me happy isn't necessarily what makes you happy. Creativity turns your thinking into something useful, something only you could do because no one else sees the world like you. Think about it. What are we doing when we paint, write, talk and draw? We are bringing forth that which is in us, that which we do not understand. That is why the urge to create is so tremendously and overwhelmingly strong. We are trying to contend with unconscious parts of ourselves. We are trying to understand them, see them, listen to them. We are trying to understand ourselves and bring about a more integrated sense of self, a sense of self that sees all or more sides of itself. We are projecting aspects of ourselves onto paper or through the voice box in song form or through our bodies as dance, and we call this creativity. And in much the same way, writing is a conversation with the self. Painting is an encounter with the self. A song is a rhythmic personal sensation, the purest art of self-expression. Creation, therefore, is learning about ourselves through our chosen modality. When we create, we see, hear, or read that which was in us, that which was overlooked, that which we did not know about ourselves. Creativity is the means by which human beings grow. Creativity is how we win, hide and seek, with ourselves. So, if you're lost, find yourself by writing to yourself. That's what we all call journaling. Are you in pain? Give your pain a face. Draw it. See it. Speak to it. Understand it. Don't bury it. Not with conditioning, drugs, social media, likes, or noise. Listening to yourself is the first step. You'll get to know yourself. Taking responsibility for your feelings is the second step. You'll take control of your life. Writing your six-month plan, your goals, is the third step. Now you have something to aim at. Constantly auditing and checking over your plan so that you know where you're headed and why is the fourth step. Now you're living your own life. And the fifth step? Throw find your purpose in the bin. Don't ever look it up again and don't listen to anyone who tells you you're supposed to be a certain someone. Be whoever you want to be.